How's it going everyone? JakeXVX here, back on Forza Horizon 4 once again. Last week there was the Forza Update 9 preview livestream where we heard all about Update 9 which released also last week. However in that livestream there was something quite interesting where they had the lead audio design guy that sorts out all of the sounds in Forza and he basically just kind of answered a few questions and was just basically interviewed and told us how Forza sounds are made. He showed his real life footage of them recording Forza sounds and also real life footage of how the, um, the horns were made as well, you know, the musical horns. So in today's video, I'm going to kind of talk about that, show you how it all works because not everyone saw the live stream and quite a lot of people found it boring. But I'm going to show you the real life footage, explain how the Forza sounds are made because it's quite interesting to be honest with you and the footage is pretty cool. First of all, I do need to quickly say that this is not a video defending the sounds in Forza Horizon 4. I still think that they're very weak. There's no excuse for the duplicate sounds that they make. There's no excuse whatsoever for removing the sounds that used to sound good and making them sound bad again, which they've done. This isn't a video defending them, although it does seem like making sounds is harder than we thought. Yeah, it, it, it's still it's still not an excuse but I still want to talk about it in today's video because it's genuinely quite interesting and quite cool stuff. Believe it or not the actual sounds in Forza Horizon 4 are recorded and come from the real life version of the cars. It's not just as simple as them going into an audio making software and making a sound that sounds similar to a hurricane. What they genuinely do is find a real life hurricane for example record it and then edit it and put it into the game. That's how it works. And they do this apparently with airstrips. So let's say for example, they want a car sound for a Nissan 370Z. What they would do is they would search online or I don't know, I don't know where they'd search for it, but they would search for a Nissan 370Z owner. Playground games obviously themselves would have to find an airstrip somewhere in the UK. They'd have to book it. So book an airstrip for the day to themselves get all these car owners down to the airstrip that the recording sounds for, there could be several cars at a time, and then they start recording it. They use several different camera angles, one in the engine bay, in interior, exterior, exhaust view, and they just get loads of different points of view of the sound of this car. And although it sounds pretty simple to this point, that he's explained that it can be quite difficult because it might not be worth booking an airstrip for one day for one car. They want to try to get as much out of it as possible. For example, they'll try and get five different car owners that they need sounds for. They'll try to pick a day that suits all five of them, pick an airstrip that's close enough to them all, get them all down and record, if you know what I mean. And they explained that f to make a car sound, they have to get them to drive their car in first gear all the way up to red line. Then in second gear, all the way up to red line in third and fourth and fifth and sixth, they have to proper cane their car quite surprisingly and he also mentioned that not every car owner actually wants this to happen to their car for example imagine if you own a high-end sports car or supercar and you get asked to absolutely thrash it through every gear up to red line i can see not everyone being happy with that but to put it short that's how they do it i'm sure in the game there's some sounds which are kind of made out of nowhere like the Hot Wheels cars, for example, and possibly some of the Hoonigans. I can't imagine they managed to get any of those on an airstrip, obviously. Hot Wheels ones don't really exist. So they would have had to create those out of nowhere, but most of the cars in the game, all hundreds of them, come from real life sounds. Now I'm actually going to show you the clips that we were shown. Um, I think they showed us clips of the McLaren Senna being recorded. Uh, there was an Audi, I don't remember which one. The, the R32 GTR, the Dodge Viper, the Lamborghini Aventador, which is a controversial one, so this will be interesting. But here are some clips of these five, six cars being recorded on the airstrip. This is genuine Playground Games footage. And then we'll have a little bit of Forza comparison to that as well. So this was a, an absolutely epic beast. This thing was taken off the line with not.
That's him getting saved. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. I think that's all of them that they showed. They showed some of the, the car horns as well, which I'll show in a little bit. But to be honest, some of the car sounds there do seem pretty similar to the real life versions, like the McLaren Senna. I think the McLaren Senna was very well done. You can hear a resemblance for every single one for every single car, but some of them end up sounding quite bad. Like the Dodge Viper, for example, you can genuinely hear that it's come from that Dodge Viper car sound clip. But in the game, it ends up sounding just very flat and very, very odd. I don't know if this is intentional, if they've accidentally done this. I'm not sure. But for nearly every car in the game, it seems like this is what they have to do. They have to get a car, get it to the airstrip, record it, edit it several different times. Now, I think the whole reason that they talked about this in the live stream and explained how it all happens, explained how it all works, is because of the amount of complaints they get about the car sounds. After hearing how car sounds work, I can understand why, for example, the new Apollo IE, I understand why they can't get a car sound for it, because they're really going to struggle to get a real life Apollo IE on a drag strip. But when they have to then get an existing sound and duplicate it onto the Apollo, I don't think that's the solution. They need to edit it a bit, they still need to give it its own exclusive sound, because honestly, personally, and people agree with me, I'm probably not going to even bother driving the Apollo because of how it sounds. It just makes it so boring and so different. And something else as well, this live stream talk that they had, that I'm talking about today, this doesn't explain at all why they remove good sounds from the game. I like to talk about the Lamborghini Gallardo. In Forza Horizon 3, it sounded brilliant. It had its own exclusive car sound, it sounded pretty good. One of my favourite cars to drive, just because of how it sounded. Now in Forza Horizon 4, they've removed it and given it a duplicate sound that sounds absolutely pants. Honestly, if a car sound sounds really good, I don't care that it gets reused in the next Forza for maybe a couple of times. The solution isn't to remove it, it makes no sense. One example is actually the Koenigsegg 1 to 1. The Koenigsegg 1 to 1 in Forza Horizon 4 sounds the same as the Koenigsegg Agera in Forza Horizon 2, which are many, many years apart. I'm not bothered about that because it's a good car sound. They've done well with that, so reuse it. Please reuse all the good car sounds. Because they reuse that good Koenigsegg car sound, even years later, it, I drive the Koenigsegg 1 to 1 a lot because it just sounds nice. Another thing I want to show you is just the horns that they did as well. Apparently what they did is they found a field in the middle of nowhere and I can't remember what it was now. I think in real life you can actually get musical car horns. You can buy kits for it and do your own and stuff like that. And they genuinely got one in, found a field in real life and then spent the whole day in the field just recording different notes with this weird horn type thing. They obviously recorded it, went back to the studio, and made all of these musical car horns. Here's some of the clips of that. Into the horn. On field. And we have modded the can sprayer so it just fits into the pipe. <laughs> 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 
so that's pretty funny and cool to see as well but when it comes to forza audio sounds they've done well but also quite bad there are car sounds that they've clearly worked very hard on like mclaren senna it genuinely did sound very good and very accurate to the real life version but there are some that are just so incredibly weak and make no sense whatsoever that these are the ones we're bothered about the most. I've driven several GTRs in real life and I know that the car sound in Forza Horizon 2 for a GTR is a lot closer than in Horizon 4 and I don't know why they, I don't know why they had to change it. I would love the Horizon 2 sound to return. But overall it was quite interesting to see how all the sounds and everything works in Forza Horizon 4. A lot more to it than I thought, it does seem a lot harder than I thought it would be, but come on, we no more duplicate sounds please. Do let me know in the comment section below what you think of the sounds now, if you found this interesting, if you think that it's harder than you thought, or if you agree with me that yeah it is a bit harder, but no excuse for the duplicate sounds and just removing sounds, that makes no sense, and that's what we want fixed. Leave a like if you've enjoyed everyone, subscribe if you haven't already for more Forza Horizon 4 content and I'll see you all later.